I know this is super late, but I got distracted, okay? Hey guys, sorry I haven't been uploading as much as I usually do. I'm in the process of switching jobs, and so that's been taking up a bunch of my time. But I've missed you guys so much, and I have to booktube. It is a compulsion. So here we go, a little cathartic booktubing time for me. So yeah, it's almost time for me to put up my favorite books of summer, and I realized I'd forgotten to put up my favorite books of spring, but I kind of got distracted by all the different sorts of videos I wanted to make. So let's just take a little trip back now into the books I loved this spring. Number 8, A Soldier's Duty by Jean Johnson. I read this in June. This is just a wonderful sci-fi book. Sure, it's a bit heavy on the military jargon, but if you skim those parts, it's just beautiful. Our main character can see all the possible paths the future can take and the probability levels that each will happen. As she moves through life making decisions, the possible paths shift and the probabilities fluctuate. Turns out if she doesn't maneuver her life a certain way, things are going to go badly for the universe. All the paths to her goal lead through the military. I was highly surprised I love this book so much, but I got sucked into it so hard I think I am still reeling from it. Number 7, The Selection by Kiera Cass. I read this in May, and I was actually a bit skeptical going into this young adult book and came out of it really loving it. It took what could have been a really gimmicky plot and just made it really authentic feeling and super sweet. Number 6, Hope's Folly by Linnea Sinclair, read in June. I like this sci-fi romance series from Linnea Sinclair, but this is by far my favorite of the series. It has perhaps my favorite main character in a romance novel ever. I just got such a clear picture of Rhea in my mind, and she felt so authentically real. Not just a set of characteristics, but someone who could sit down next to me and start talking and I would believe she was real. Fully realized, I guess is a good way to put it. It's super good. At number 5, Rush Too Far by Abby Glines, read in May. This is just Fallen Too Far rewritten from Rush's point of view. I didn't think I would like reading the same plot over again, but seeing it from Rush's point of view was actually really fascinating. Enough so that I immediately reread Fallen Too Far right after to compare the differences. And she did a really amazing job with the different perspectives. Both these books are kind of like crack for me, and this is also the first new adult series I ever read. Number 4, The Biography of Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. I finished this in April. This was just a fascinating read. Steve Jobs was a complex man, brilliant, but definitely not always the perfect human being. I think this book does a good job showing that complexity. Oftentimes with famous figures, we get a black or white view, all or nothing. Even after this bio came out, a lot of people were like, he was justified in being so awful because of the great things he produced. But in this book, his friends and family are quick to say that they fully believe that the brilliance he produced was not dependent on him being such an awful antisocial schmuck. He could have done the same thing while still treating others like human beings. Anyway, just read it. He is a really fascinating character. At number 3, City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. I read this in May when it came out. I think it was the biggest book event of the year in the booktube community. City of Heavenly Fire was actually too big for the box it came in. It was bulging at the top. My point is, this book is ridiculously large, but it was also amazingly good. Cassandra Clare is just a master of writing. She never ceases to amaze me. Number 2, Destroy Me by Tahara Mafi, read in June. Yes, my second favorite book of spring 2014 is a novella, but it's because this novella is the best novella I have ever ever read, and you cannot read the Shatter Me series without reading this novella. It's from the perspective of Warner, the villain in the first book, and it weaves a complex portrait that is stunning, stunning, <clears throat> stunning. And my favorite book of spring 2014 was Don't Look Back by Jennifer L. Armantrout, read in April. This lady gets better and better every book she publishes. I can't wait to see what she publishes next. Don't Look Back is a young adult thriller, and I'm not typically a thriller fan, but this is so elegantly done and it will have you at the edge of your seat. If you haven't read this yet, pick it up. It tops my list because it's just that good. All right, those are my favorite books of spring 2014. What was your favorite book of spring? If you can remember back that far, I had to go in and check the read dates in Goodreads.